Welcome along to Marchers Off The Rail. Carl Boys, as ever, is with me. Also coming up, we've got an interview with Emily Fraser talking all things Predator Championship League, Paul. But before we get into that, Boise, four medals behind you, but you're actually now five-time Moscone Cup champion. Let's have a little chat about December. How, how good was it for you to be back in the fold and to win 11-3? Yeah, it was awesome, mate. And, uh, you know, I have misplaced my medal, I won't lie. I've, I've clocked that a few times. I thought, I need to get that stuck up on the wall, but I don't know where I've put it. It must be still in the suitcase, mate. Or maybe the Tiger at it or something, I don't know. It's disappointing. I was thinking for a minute, do we not give the vice captain a medal? Have we messed up there? But come on, boys, you have got to unpack that suitcase and get it up there. I know, schoolboy error, mate. I will, I will get it done for the uh, next time. Yeah, but um, you know, Mozza was an unusual one. Um, no crowd, obviously. You was there, and it was just a bit. You know, day one, no one knew kind of how to act and and what to do. It was all a bit mental, but you know. It's it's the past now, and uh, obviously Europe got the win, and uh, look forward to Vegas and hopefully a crowd. And do you think that was one of the important factors to getting the win and the big win was how well the European team seemed to handle how different last year's Moscone Cup was? Yeah, I think you know, I think if you were going to look back and and, and talk about some key points, I think the fact that Justin Bergman obviously couldn't fly over because of COVID, I think that was a big loss to Team USA. And, uh, yeah, I think just after day one, me and uh, Alex had a chat and we, we just felt it was a little... I mean, obviously, it was going to be quiet in the arena, but we were just kind of sat there thinking, well, you know, if, if Albin or Jason or whoever pots the nine, what do we do? We can't really start going a bit mental because it's like just us two in this big room screaming and shouting, but that's kind of what it needed to, um, to happen. So on day two, we just brought a bit more heat. And how is the Tiger? Where is the Tiger? The tiger uh, is still with us, uh, and it it pops up now and again all over the house. My son likes the tiger, um, but there's there's a little hole that's like you know like the the cotton's undone, so there's like polystyrene ball bearings that I just keep finding all over the house. But it's still with us, the tiger. Do you, do you think that was actually one of the things? Maybe not the tiger so much, but there was a lot of talk before the event. There was the the tiger. There was the whole snakes thing. It, I, I don't know how it became an animal, animal themed Moscone Cup, but. <laughs> Did, did, did Europe win sort of the, the war of words as well before the tournament started? Yeah, I mean, it was it, was, it wasn't even a contest, was it? We killed them. But it just, you know, it was all good fun and a bit of banter. And the fact that their uh, vice captain was called Joey and then, you know, it just hit me straight away. I'm going to start calling him Joey Exotic. And then one thing led to another and I've got a, a six-foot tiger with me. So, so, Carl, if you were the American captain or, or vice captain what would you pinpoint obviously there's the Bergman thing might not be an issue for them this year but how do they improve from 11-3 to winning the Moscone Cup this year yeah I think you know I don't want to keep going on about it but Bergman was a loss but I also I feel like Johan brought Tyler Steyer in for a reason he's that you know he's, he's, an, he's American but he's got that European uh, pool ethic about him you know he seems to work very hard at his game and and does everything right, goes to the gym and, you know, and speaks very well. And, you know, in fact, if I was involved in Team America, I would certainly look at to uh, bring in Tyler back because I thought he was uh, great for the team. So I think there was a few things that were going on in Team America and, um, yeah, it just didn't bode well. And, and, and I think the other key factor is the fact that we could pick four wild cards as well with, you know, no, no sort of like undercover European pool player could sneak through the rankings who's, you know, not, played in a Mozza and, and maybe not handle the situation too well. And that, of course, might be something that you'll have to think about this year with Alex, is if you do get somebody come through the rankings who maybe is a rookie and it's new to them. Of course, you had that anyway, of course, with, with Fedor, and there were question marks perhaps a bit unfairly, but there were question marks before the tournament about Catchy and the Moscone Cup as well. Do you feel that, that those two guys acquitted themselves well? Yeah, I think the uh, we're, we're very well. Yeah, I think... It'll be interesting, but I mean, by the way, I've still not heard off uh, Emily about if I'm uh, vice captain or not, so maybe I'll just be back in the comms box, pal, or sat with you on off the rail. I, don't know. <laughs> I think I, I, I've replaced you for off the rail as well, pal, so, you know, maybe you'll be watching it on the sofa with a beer this year. Yeah, but I think um, it'll be interesting if Fedor makes the team and, you know, there is there is a crowd allowed back in the arena, you know, there's a lot of factors going on, but just be interesting to see how Fedor plays with the crowd. 
Um, and Chris Robinson, obviously, them two guys, you know, they'd not played in a, in a Mozza and unfortunately they didn't experience that. You know, when you play in a Mozza and you're a pool player and you play in most pool tournaments with very little crowd, there's a, there's a moment on day one where the floor manager comes to get you and it's like, right, come on. And obviously all the team are going to the arena and then they open like the door and then all of a sudden the noise hits you and you think, oh shit, this is, you know, it's about to get real now. And, you know, unfortunately Fedor and Chris Robinson have not experienced that. So let's just say hypothetically they both make the team and there's a crowd. They're still kind of rookies, aren't they? So it's going to be uh, an interesting uh, cup as always. There's a great picture, I think, from Blackpool 2014, where you're all in the tunnel waiting to be brought out into... And that Blackpool Moscone Cup was such an intense arena. It, it must be a special moment when you stood there about to come out and you can hear that noise. Yeah, it is. It's just um, it's surreal because, you know, as I just said, you play a lot of pool tournaments all year. And now and again, there's a pretty decent crowd, but nothing like the Moscone Cup. I mean, you only have to look at the, the likes of what Shane Van Bonin has won in pool for himself playing in, you know, US Opens and I know he's not won a World Nine Ball Championships, but he's been to the final and he's won like World Ten Balls and freaking you know, he's he's won pretty much everything in in the game. And you can see how kind of like under the gun he, he looks in the Mozza. And that's just purely because we're just not used to it. And, you know, it's like you go from one man and his dog watching you to three thousand screaming alcoholics. It's it's you know, it's mental really. It's, it's certainly a special atmosphere at the Moscone Cup and we very much hope that we'll be able to welcome the fans back to the Moscone Cup later this year. December 6th to 9th for this year's Moscone Cup. Mark in your diary, as soon as we have news on the venue and on the ticket availability, we will let you know. You can join the Matchroom Pool Club as well if you want to get exclusive priority ticket access. That's all at matchroompool.com. But we're going to leave last year's Moscone Cup behind now and we're going to look forward to our first event of 2021, that is the Predator Championship League pool. Myself and Carl will have a chat about that in a moment, but first, earlier this week, I spoke to the Matchroom Multisport Managing Director, Emily Fraser. I'm here with Emily Fraser, the Managing Director of Matchroom Multisport, and that's because three weeks from now, Predator Championship League pool, a brand new event, the sixth event in the Matchroom portfolio. Very exciting times, Emily. Just tell us all about this new event. Well, we've just announced a full calendar, and for the first time ever in our matchroom pool history we've got six events which is just fantastic and so exciting even in the situation that we are in i mean it's been a couple of months since the last pool event which was the moscone cup uh, this 2021 it's the first live professional pool event championship league pool uh, a brand new format that i'm not sure everyone quite follows but in all fairness it's taken me a few goes to even understand it we've got 19 players seven players a day, uh, all battling it out, race to five, quick matches. Um, and it's a league format, bottom of uh, the table gets relegated home, top player goes into the winner's group for more prize money and uh, the other five players sort of battle it through and into the next day. And uh, we're very, very excited. We've obviously uh, come together with Predator for this, who were a vital component to getting the event over the line. And it's just so exciting to have a brand new event. We've got three females representing. In what uh, recent event have we been able to, to show that in such a small field? Um, and so I know there's been this little bit of side talk with sponsorship and let's just clear this up and let's just get the facts right. Since day one, every player has been able to wear their own player sponsor on their jerseys since day one no problem about it obviously everyone knows predator is a title sponsor of the event and hats off to them for coming on board and helping us get it over the line uh, as part of that each player does have to have a predator logo on their jersey in association to the event championship league pool so it's all in association with the event the whole predator experience uh, not through individual player endorsement. And it's going to be slightly different for a lot of people tuning in. Um, we obviously have our usual sponsors that we have for our pool events, but times are changing. Um, you know, these companies aren't around forever and we have to look at the future of our game. And yes, it might be slightly frustrating 
right now, but the main point is to ensure that we are giving players every opportunity to A, play in a live professional pool event, B, 160 live hours on TV, which is global, across the world, everyone can tune in for eight days. It's 20, it's 20 hours a day um, and 24 matches a day. Everyone is going to get their pool fix and these different players that are lining up for the field, group one fixtures is absolutely, it's just blinding. I'm, so, I'm excited and, uh, and I'm sure all the pool fans are as well. So slightly frustrating that we're having this you know, sponsor riffraff going back and forth. We're obviously promoters at the end of the day. We're also focusing on snooker, fishing, ten pin. But our main goal is to ensure that we have more events. And it's great that we've, we've managed to have a brand new one as well. And it's just such a shame that something like this and all this negativity is actually overshadowing such a huge investment into this sport. Um, eight days, $85,000 of prize money, um, and all these hours internationally. Um, so I hope everyone can sort of just draw a line under it. We want to be as fair as possible to our players. Um, and even though it's a shame that some of them won't be competing, it's also a great opportunity for these other players to come into the fold. Uh, the winners group is going to be part of our Matchroom World Rankings. Fantastic news for the end goal of the Moscone Cup later on this year. Uh, so again, it is a shame, but let's look ahead and let's, we're not in pool for the short term, we're in it for the long run. So let's get another event under our belt. Thank you Predator for helping us in achieving that. And let's look forward to an exciting, new, fantastic event that's about to take place in just a couple of weeks time. There's been no pool on the calendar. Let's look forward to that and let's stop the negativity. Um, I'm so excited. Well, yeah, let, let's look forward then because that first group, like you mentioned, is, is fantastic. We've got Albin Alshon, Kelly Fisher, Iklent Catch is in there, Chris Robinson. The first match, Josh Filler versus Chris Melling on the TV table. What a way to start. Exactly. We're live here in the UK on Free Sports and uh, Matchroom Live, and it's great to see the likes of Melling back. Uh, also, Darren Appleton into the mix as well. And our third British is Kelly Fisher. What a group one. You've got Nils coming into the mix, um, who missed out on the Moscone Cup last year. So he's going to be looking at that and saying, OK, what have I got this year? I've got Championship League pool. Also, there's potentially World Pool Masters coming up, the World Pool Championship, the US Open. We've got so many things to look forward to. And I just think this format is just... It's different, exciting. Okay, it's our first event. Prize money might appear low, um, but there's a different way of awarding your money as well in this league table format. And you just, it's just a lot of matches. Race to five, it's anyone's game. I'll go back to it again. Three females in the mix. Oh, obviously I'm buzzing for that. And I think what an opportunity that we're giving these players um, the chance to come into an event, both male and female, and to, to really sort of challenge one another. And Race to Five is perfect for that. And the format you mentioned, it's a format we've actually borrowed from snooker. We've been doing it for quite a while in snooker. It's very popular. And what it means is we're getting a lot of quick matches, Race to Fives involving all the top players. You can tune in and you're going to see a really exciting match that means something, which is going to be, be quick action. And it's just going to be something for everybody to enjoy for a week. Exactly. There's been no live pool and I keep saying it. We've got eight days. It's a format that we've adopted from the snooker that's worked brilliantly. Again, we're not in this for the short term. We have launched Predator Championship League pool because we see ourselves setting up, setting up for the long run. This is something that we could introduce every year, annually, twice a year, maybe a couple of stops throughout the year. We don't know, but we can only really chance these things if we trial it and we, we open the door and say, OK, let's go, let's see what we can do. But we can't run before we can walk and we have to, to see how it happens. And these things cost money. We're in a pandemic. Um, but again, let's not overshadow the excitement that we've got to look forward to, the different players that we've got um, coming into the mix. 
the format is a little bit challenging, but everyone's going to get their head around it and it is going to be match, 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 match. There's going to be no time for toilet breaks and people are going to be glued to their screens for eight days. We have never done an event in our history of eight days for live pool. So what's everyone complaining about? And wherever you are in the world, you can watch it, whether that's free sports here in the UK, on DAZN or Matchroom.live, wherever you are, you can watch it. Emily, just before we let you go, it's all steam ahead at Matchroom at the moment because right after the Championship League pool, into May, World Pool Masters and the return of the World Pool Championships are very busy times. Extremely busy and we recently had got our heads together about the World Pool Championship format. Uh, you know, these things don't just magically happen. We have to sit down and talk about it. And We've only actually done one US Open event, which is our only multi-table event within our uh, team. And it's scary because we don't really know what we're doing when it comes to things like that. And um, I think we're all very, very excited. Uh, 16 tables in comparison to 33 is slightly different. Um, we're here in the UK in May, uh, potentially behind closed doors, but that doesn't stop us. Um, that's something that's new to the fold. Um, it creates a new design that we can bring to the arena, a new way that we can produce our events. And that's one thing that we're looking at for our events coming up. Even Championship League, uh, Paul, I nearly said snooker. Um, there's a different way of showing these uh, events and it's a two table event for that one. So we've got May, we have the, the sort of blockbuster um, events coming up, the Whirlpool Masters, Whirlpool Championship. We've got the World Cup of Paul um, here in the UK be an interesting one with the two teams from the host nation which i know we've got up our sleeve and everyone's going to love that announcement um us open we're planning for and then finally with the moscone cup are we here in the uk or are we going to take it to america these are all things that we need to sit down and and talk it through and find out what the best situation is um, but again we like to plan things through carefully and we like to make sure that we execute it to a standard that we are happy with um, and everyone enjoys themselves so we must just focus on what's coming up which is a full calendar of six events from Matching Ball which we've never delivered before let's focus on that let's not overshadow any of that with any sort of negativity it's an exciting time ahead indeed it is and it all starts with Predator Championship League pool this March the 22nd don't miss it so much pool to come in the next few months from Matchroom Pool. It's an exciting time, isn't it, Carl? Because we, we waited all last year for the Moscone Cup, then we had that, and then we've had to wait a little bit longer than perhaps we'd hoped for like the World Pool Masters and the World Pool Championship, but we're finally underway. We've got these four events in the next few months, and it kicks off with Predator Championship League Pool. Brand new event. We've seen it work so well in snooker. We're going to be seeing 24 matches a day over two tables at Championship League Pool. Loads of great players. The first match, the very first match, Chris Melling versus Joshua Filler. What a start. This is so exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, after the Mozza, I was thinking, oh, is it going to be a, a, another year with no pool? And then, you know, obviously Matchroom uh, does what they do best and they just um, announce all the events and then just stick a, another little cheeky one in just to get things going. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, plenty of matches, plenty of variety for everyone to see and, uh, you know, just get pool back out there and, uh, you know, back to people talking about it, basically. Exactly. And with all these matches, short races, race to five, which we've only ever seen at the Moscone Cup before. So we've not seen that in an individual tournament, but every player will play six times a day. So they're going to have to win a lot of racks to win the tournament. But it's going to be quick. It's going to be fast. It's going to be in your face, which is, especially with some of the players we've got in this event, it's kind of what we want Paul to be, isn't it? Something exciting to sit down and watch and, and enjoy the matches. Yeah, I mean, it's a funny one, really, because obviously, you know, I've been on the other side of it. You know, I've gone to tournaments. And I've played short races and, I, and I've done me, me, uh, me moaning in the bar with the other players saying, oh, this is no good. We're flying all over the world. But now I'm on the other side of it, the, the media side, if you, if you like. I sort of get why it's, it is that way. And um, yeah, it's better for viewing. And obviously, with me just in the comms box, just watching, you know, there's going to be a lot of drama. As you said, it's a race to five. The good thing with race to five is someone can be three, one, four, one up before you know it. It's four, three, four, four. There's going to be a lot of drama, that's for sure. It's exactly what we see at the Moscone Cup, isn't it? And, and this time, with the format of the event, you're not flying halfway around the world to play a couple of short race matches and be knocked out. You're getting at least six. And, of course, 
if you stay in all of the groups, you could be playing many, many matches throughout the week against top players. So it's, if you're a pro, I imagine it's exactly what you want right before a Whirlpool Masters and Whirlpool Championship as well. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, obviously, there's there's no there's no hiding place. You know, social media is in everyone's faces these days with phones, iPads. And, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm still involved in the pool world and I've seen a lot of comments. And, you know, I've had people ask me questions, genuine questions, to be fair, about the event. You know, in my eyes, at the end of the day, it's a pool tournament. And if you're a player, it's good for your sponsors. Um, at the end of the day, it's not the World Championships. It's not the US Open. And, you know, it doesn't have the big prize fund like that, but it is another pool tournament. It's a match room pool tournament. So, you know, plenty of matches, loads of players, um, loads of upsets, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, plenty of, plenty of drama. And lo lots of players we're very familiar with, the likes of Josh Filler, of course, just part of your Moscone Cup winning team there. Chris Robinson's coming over, so it'll be his first match room tournament since the Moscone Cup. A, a good opportunity for him, I guess, to play a lot of quick matches against top players on a TV table, which, you know, he's still quite young in his career. So a great opportunity for somebody like Chris. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like you said, you know, we've got the first group. Kelly's in there on her own fighting it for the ladies. So I'm, uh, I'm very interested to see how she gets on. You know, it's a race to five. She can beat the guys a race to nine. No problem. No problem whatsoever. And she's that type of character where she's got that grit and determination. So she'll get some scalps. As you said, we've got Joshua playing Chris first match. Chris is not the most consistent nine ball pool player in the world because he still plays like a bit of snooker. He plays a bit of English eight ball. He doesn't dedicate himself 100% to nine ball. So he's not going to be consistent. But what he can do is he can play, he can play these race to fives and he'll cause upsets. I won't be shocked if he beats Joshua Filler in the first match. No. And one player who you know very well who's coming back, a, a first match room event for a few years for Darren Appleton, who's won everything there is to win in pool. And really good to see Darren coming back to the match room fold. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was a professional fisherman these days, to be honest. It's been that long since I've seen him. Um, but yeah, I mean... Again, he's still he's still hungry to win. He's you know he can still play. He's only forty five or forty six, something like that, and he's a keen practiser. He will be putting the effort in, and you know he want to win. It's a it's a chance for Daz at the end of the day. You know he's a Hall of Famer. He's won everything in the world of pool, but even even. After all he's won, it's still a big thing for him. He's still got to go out there because it, it's a new era of pools. There's a lot of young guys playing it now. He's not played it. I'm trying to think the last pool tournament he probably won, to be fair. So it's big for him. You know, this event, it's big for Daz. And he'll go prepared. I'm looking forward to watching Daz, see how he's playing. Kelly Fisher. And, and let's just see what happens. And you mentioned Kelly there holding up for the ladies in the first group. Well, later in the week, we'll see Yasmin Ocean come over. Also, Christina's coming over from Russia. So a, a few of the top female players represented, plus some younger European players as well. So like you said, there's going to be lots of shocks, lots of upsets in this. And, and it's going to be very difficult to draw ourselves away from this tournament, I think. I think we'll sit down, watch it, and get really hooked on Championship League pool. Yeah, and the, the big thing what I like is the fact that it is a race to five. So, you know, before you know it, match one's going to be over and you've got another two players coming out. It's just loads of variety, loads of pool, and probably just what the pool world needs right now. Everyone can, around the world, you know, we watch the Mozza. It's a team event. Now we get to watch, you know, match room, do what they do best, put an event on. And, you know, I, I can't wait, to be fair. I just can't wait. And there'll be and plenty, plenty of time, of time for, you for you to be in the commentary booth, Carl. Eight, eight days, days of it, we're looking forward to <laughs> We are very, very much looking, looking forward, forward to that. that. It, it all kicks, it all kicks off, off at midday, midday every, every day. day. If you're in the UK, UK we're on free sports. sports. If you're in one of the zone countries, such as the USA, Germany, Spain, Australia, you can watch us on the zone and elsewhere around the world, matching life. So wherever you are in the world, we'll be able to watch both tables. Plus, as an added bonus, for free, every single day we'll have one of the top matches going out on YouTube. So you can get a little flavour of what Championship Goodbye from me and Carl.